This video is simple. It is a project I decided to work on in my house. What I learned is that you can take any piece of wood and transform it with just a regular printer, some glue, and some Bondo. This is what the table looked like before. There were pointed corners and there were spaces in the rocks that were difficult to clean. Also, the wood is dark and we wanted something that was more uplifting. Step one. I've already cut off the corners because the corners I'd bump into and then I get a bruise on my leg and I'm gonna sand it all down and then I'm gonna paint it and then I'm gonna put a coat on top. I don't know what I'm gonna paint it yet, but it'll be good. But this is a before. Sorry if you made this table, but it's just not for me, it's for someone else. Step two, sanding. It took me about two days because I ran out of sandpaper and I had to order some more. The best sandpaper to use on wood is 60 grit or less because that helps you to shape the wood and to remove the stain that was on there before. Here are the legs and as you can see I've completely rounded out the front part of the leg. It was pointed before. I'm gonna paint the stone white and then that'll give a blank canvas so that we can put a beautiful picture, something that we really like. And then it's just going to be a clear gloss that's going to go on the wood. This is the paint that I had in the shed. It just says semi-gloss interior latex enamel. And it's white. And I just want to use this so that I can get this color to be white. This is my way of opening the paint. This paint has been in the shard for a while, so I'll just see what it looks like. That is some old paint, but I know that if I mix it, it's possible that it gets better. After a few minutes of mixing, it was beginning to look usable. For this project, I am using things that we already have in the shed, and there was this very old brush, which I used and it worked okay, and then this old paint which was used to cover the stones. Painted one square. The reason for painting this white is to lift the color from black because we're going to print out a beautiful picture and then glue that picture on top. So the picture is gonna be printed out on a white background. So that background needs to be white. This is the picture and my mom chose this picture. It was edited a little bit in Illustrator so that when we printed out the margins don't take away from the image and I can glue them together. The first printing attempt I was able to print it out correctly but the printer ink began to run out. After I printed it out it took some time to carefully glue all the pieces together but it was beginning to look very nice. Okay, so change of plans. We decided to just completely cover the stones and the white paint. So let me show you what it looks like now. Okay, so we put some paste to fill in the holes around the stones. And then I sanded the stones down so they're more smooth. And um, the paste I made with sawdust and glue. I just put another layer of glue on top to fill in the areas and this part is looking good. The corners are nice and rounded. I'm actually gonna sand this down a bit more so it's not as sharp and then I'm going to leave a white edge and put the paper on top so no more stone squares. It's gonna be a beautiful picture. Okay, so I'm using this wood glue to fill in the holes. So here you can see how there are these little holes and I just want to fill them in so when we paint over this and put the paper you can't see the holes from the other side so I'm gonna use this glue to fill in. You could say that step six of this project was to completely fill in the top part of the table 
there are cracks, there were differences in this level of the surface. My goal was to fill this in however I could. Okay, so I painted the first coat on the top of the table. Ta-da! So what I'm thinking is, to do this right, I need to put masking tape along the edge to preserve this edge so that white paint doesn't get there. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Okay, this is the picture that we chose. And you can see eight and a half by 11. Um, it took a while to get this picture the way it is. First I put it in Photoshop and then Illustrator to print out just like this. You can do this in Illustrator. To print out on regular 8.5x11, there's a printing option called Tiled. And make sure that the margin is set to zero. There is the painted table with the tape. It's drying in the sun. This is the error. The printer printed out a margin and it took away from the image. And so we have to do something with these pieces of paper. They're so beautiful. So I'm gonna make a serving tray. I'm gonna put these flowers on top. I wanted to show you what it looked like after I painted it because um, the glue and the paint, as some of the more knowledgeable people out there already know, didn't cover the holes the way I wanted it to. As you can see, you can still see this cross in the middle but it is much smoother. But then it has these kind of holes there. So I did some research online and a lot of people said to use Bondo. So I got some Bondo and that's what I'm gonna do today is make this all smooth and sand it and hopefully that'll be smooth enough to put the paper on top. So this is the Bondo I got and this hardener. And I've used this stuff before when I was a student in the university working on a project. I really like it. So you can do a lot of really cool things with this. So hopefully it will work. These are the tools that I'm going to use. Stick to mix it, this to spread it out, and this to open the can. Cardboard. So it's a good idea to wear a mask. Safety first. I probably should have just done this from the beginning, but if it's in the middle of a pandemic and it's difficult to get things from the store, it's sometimes better to just try to use the things that you have lying around. But I ordered this stuff, so let's see if it works. Oh, and it's nice and stinky if you want something to really stinky to work with. Okay, hardener, and just mix it till it's pink, pink color. It's so smelly. I put this hat back on. It's very stinky. Yeah, you have to be outside. You cannot do this inside. Anyone who's inside in a shop mixing this, bad idea. <laughs> Unless you have like some kind of high-tech filter system. Okay, so now that it's pink, mostly pink, I'm going to take this and put it on the table. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to get it to where this cross is. I'm gonna have to use the whole can to fill this out. You guys, the Bondo made a miracle happen. The surface of the table is completely smooth and I just sanded it down and painted it white. Step seven. I'm really happy with how this is going to look. So now I'm just trying to decide how to put this paper on the table. And the Bondo worked really well. The Bondo worked really well. It left it really smooth and nice. And I just glued down this little point here because this is how the paper is gonna fit. 
I'm deciding if I should work from this corner forward or just lay it down and roll out the creases. I glued many 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper together so it doesn't lay completely flat like a poster board would. I'm worried there will be bubbles of air as I roll them out. The paper could rip. I think I will start with lots of glue and then just lay it on top and see what happens. School glue, making a comeback. Maybe I should just dump it. <laughs> Now I'm going to paint it. Paint, spread the glue around. People put up those billboards in like 10 seconds with glue and paper. So if they can do that, I can try to do this. It'd be moderately successful. Let's see. Will you work? Let's do this. Problems, problems. Ah, look. Big crease. What to do? I have a rolling pin. I don't know. So as you can see, there's a crack here. Paper is a little bit separate from the wood. I want this to be completely sealed. I'm using this clear semi-gloss, water-based. If you put many layers, it'll become a little bit more yellow, a little bit more yellow. I'm thinking I'm just gonna pour it so they can really get into the cracks. Because the paper is a little bit separate from the wood and I want it to be completely sealed. The directions on the clear coat called for three to four layers. In the process of doing this, I found that the best way to apply sealing all of the cracks is to simply pour it on. A half can of paint was used for this entire project. After I was finished painting, I let the table dry in the sun and began to see the results. Look at this table! It looks amazing! It looks like a tea time fantasy table that I wished I had when I was a little. It takes five days for the table to dry and be free of odor. I just screwed up the legs and I put these little things to protect the floor at the bottom. So now I'm gonna turn it over. Ooh, it's heavy. And yeah, see the finished result. I really like the way this leg looks. It looks different. It's a bit more fine at the bottom and rounded corners. In our house, we have this lighter colored wood for some of the furniture. And so we created this reading nook where you can look out the window and have breakfast. It's really relaxed, kind of just hangout area. Look at this table that I refinished. I made a thing. If you like the look of this table and you think this video could inspire someone else, please share the video with your friends and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you.